today once again we're coming to you from man's restoration here in festus missouri and we thought you might like a closer look at this 1967 chevrolet chevelle convertible and as you can see this one's been modified quite a bit already and we'll kind of get into the body modifications as we go around but uh, first off i thought i'd kind of go over the drivetrain with you the chassis suspension everything so that you can uh, see what we're dealing with there and then we'll talk with marty a little bit about what he's doing to the body here i guess most importantly is what's going on under the hood so we'll take a peek under here and what we've got here is actually a 418 cubic inch stroker ls engine from don hardy and this one pumped out about 621 horsepower on their dyno uh, but that was with their intake and induction setup um, they've actually added this nice Inglees 8 stack injection. So with proper tuning and everything, we think it'll even pick up a little more horsepower. So it's definitely got plenty of punch. See, it's got a really nice set of headers on there as well. And then this nice billet bracket up front for all your accessories. Of course, it'll have all the modern conveniences and everything, AC and all that. And it's got this massive aluminum radiator up here with the sprint car style filler neck. It's got a nice electric fan on here keeping everything cool. And as you can see, Marty's done a little bit of metal work under the hood here as well already. Just kind of cleaning everything up. It's got a pretty impressive set of hood hinges on here as well with a little strut. Nice modern look to those. And then right here on the firewall, that's your uh, master cylinders. So you got for your wheel with disc brakes as well as for the clutch master cylinder. And it's all riding on a Roadster Shop chassis. So it's got the uh, Revo series chassis from Roadster Shop. I'll give you a little peek underneath here. And maybe in the future we can get it up on a lift so you can look at it a little bit closer. It's riding on a nice set of Billet Specialties wheels. Uh, this is from their Wedge series. And it's got a set of 18 by 10s up front with 19 by 12s in the rear. So that should give it plenty of contact patch, that's for sure. And if you look through the wheel there, you can see the Willwood disc brakes. Uh, it has 14 inch rotors up front with 12 inch rotors in the rear. And there are six piston calipers up here with four pistons in the back. Plenty of stopping power for sure. Marty's been doing all the metal work on this car. In fact, right now he's working on the center console you can see there. Pretty nice. I'll have him go over some of the metal work here in a bit. Uh, transmission wise, it actually has a 5-speed manual transmission. This is an SS700. and That's from uh, Legend Gear, I believe. Nice overdrive 5-speed. In the back here, you can see those big wide tires on there. Again, 19 by 12. Those are 345 tires. Pretty massive. And then we can take a peek underneath here. It actually has a 9 inch strange rear end with uh, 370 years. See a little bit more of the chassis there as well. Pretty impressive car. Uh, the thought with this one was to, to get it ready to take it to SEMA, um, which maybe next year possibly, but uh, it's gonna be a beauty for sure. But I thought I'd just kind of give you a little overview of the drivetrain there. And then if uh, Marty's not too busy here, maybe I can have him go over some of the body work he's done to the car. We'll see what he's got going on here. What are you working on right now, Marty? Uh, building the ribbing for the console to make it match with the, the body changes and then the dashboard here. So I wanted to follow the lines all the way through the car, come down, sweep down through here, and it'll be wrapped with leather with a engine turn or some other really fancy inserts down through here mm -hmm. that'll meet up against the ribbing here. That way it'll follow it all the way down through here. Oh yeah, that'll be a nice effect for and sure. And then take and make all of this inner structure here, make a slide for this outline, 
Yeah, that's a little bit of a challenge there to make that all. Yeah, that's a pretty out. massive stereo unit there. That's going to have navigation and everything. Yeah, GPS, yeah. everything on it. Mm -hmm. Bluetooth. I forget what all it's got on it, but it's <laughs> got everything you'd ever want, probably. And if you noticed here, uh, he's doing something pretty custom with that dashboard. Uh, originally, this wouldn't have been two separate areas, would it? It was straight across. Correct. And then you cut a notch out of there, basically, where that uh, stereo is sitting. Yeah, I wanted to follow off the body lines of the hood and carry it on through. All of this, this I have uh, foam built up on it here, a dense foam for a dash pad. Mm -hmm. So this will be built up to where it has more definition. Then also if you bang your head against it, it won't hurt as bad. Yeah, and that'll all be leather yeah. covered and everything too. And then if you'll notice, uh, he's actually built that console around the shifter there because on this particular transmission, all the uh, shifting mechanisms off to the side, correct? Yeah. So that's a, it's got a cool look to it. Very nice. Everything had to be changed as far as the steering geometry, the steering column because it's a rear steer behind the cross member with the uh, roaster shop chassis and the original steering column is up in front of the cross member. Mm -hmm. So, which in other words, it drives like a milk truck. Mm -hmm. so. Change the angle and make all the inner structure for all the uh, steering column. And that's an aftermarket column and everything mm -hmm. too, uh, with tilt and. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I did it. I did it, Colin. Uh, and, and then uh, you can see actually the console is going to continue all the way back to the back in between the rear seats there. So that's pretty nice too. I like that. This will have a foam. It'll be built up with foam so it will mm -hmm. the seats. And I imagine j Rod will cut these seats where they kind of match these. Mm -hmm. But it'll all be built with foam. And I'm not made up my mind from put the console back here or not yet. Mm -hmm. Might just leave it, you know, just build it up. Leave it smooth, it yeah. Mm -hmm. But I could put a little foam, make something like I did right here. Yeah. And as you can probably see, Marty's done very extensive amount of body work here. Uh, all the black you see, that's all brand new metal panels, correct? Correct. Yeah. So there's very little of the original structure left. Uh, what is left of the original the car, original basically? Left of the car is the hood, which instead of buying a new hood, it's a cow induction hood or a Corvette LS style or whatever. Everybody's running on the side. I wanted to make it look different, mm -hmm. one of its own. So I took the original SS hood because I like the looks of these and then just changed the design of the hood once I cut it off. I had to cut mm -hmm. the whole hood out and then raised it up and then changed the front of it up where it blows in with this line mm -hmm. here. Since I was dissecting the hood anyhow for modifications, mm -hmm. I thought, well, I'll just reuse the same hood. And also that'll give you room under there for the eight yeah. stack and any air cleaners you might have. Or, cut yeah. all the inner structure back here and then stretch that hole larger for it to clear the rear ones, mm -hmm. the rear eight stacks. Yeah, that's cool. And I still got to build the shrouding. This is going to all be hidden in through here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I like what you did with that because it has sort of a factory look, but just tweaked a little bit. Right. You know? It started out, Mike had some drawings. You know, he wanted to give it a little bit of a sinister look. Mm -hmm. thought, well, maybe move the headlight assemblies to where they tuck up tight into the hood. And mm -hmm. I had an idea. So, so I threw some cardboard down and I extended the hood. It gives it the same effect. So I brought extended the hood this much, about four inches, mm -hmm. and then I extended two inches on the fenders to match it all up. Yeah, it kind of shrouds the headlights shrouds a little bit. It makes them look a little meaner. That's pretty so cool. So one thing leads to the next. Mm -hmm. Then I said to the owner about hiding the wipers, and so that's whenever I come up with this idea to flare the hood up and then the wipers will tuck in like a new car slide underneath you. Yeah, that'd be a nice clean look. That's and then cool. when you do that, then you got to change this to match this. Mm -hmm. Then you got to change the door to match that. So it all <laughs> kind of works its way around. I still got to this over because I'm going to flush mount the windshield. So all of this will all be unitized one piece in through here. Oh, like a modern car. Yeah. So it'll a windshield to be a flush mount like the modern cars. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And then obviously all the skins, the fenders, the doors, it's all brand new metal. As we were saying, what's originally left of the car is part of the dashboard here. Mm -hmm. This was a new item because it was rusted out. 
but the main, this insert right here is the original part of the car. And I decided to, since we did all these changes here, and I had to tighten this radius up to make it blend into here, I just made it an all one piece dash. Mm, okay. So it's all unitized dash. No, the original dashes had plastic clips, screws that hold it up in there, they can work yourself loose. All right, this way it'll be more structural. Yeah, and mm. everything that I'm doing here, it's got a sequence that's got to go together and apart, you know, mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Lots of forethought <laughs> before you get into it, I yeah, guess. Sometimes yeah, sometimes you got to sit there and scratch your head, but another part, original part of the car is the inner structure for the quarter panels here, and these little braces here, mm -hmm. and this section right here because the rest of it was so rusted out that there was nothing left to work with. Wow. And then I even had to rework some of this because mm -hmm. the trunk gutter was rusted out. So, you know, you can't buy this piece, no. so you had to remake it. Yeah, it's been pretty extensive, that's for sure. Uh, let's see what you got going on at the back there. That's pretty cool, too. Well, we got here we, to compensate for the big tires. Of course, we didn't order the tires and wheels until mm -hmm. the tubs was made. But you could, yeah, it's too hard to raise up right okay. now. I can anyway, peek down in there. You can see the, the wheel well tubs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, those go in there pretty deep. And I had to recess the tubs. Once I built them, then I set the top in place. Well, the top was sticking up too high, so then I had to come back in and recess the tubs a little bit more and still get tires. So it'll sit tires. nice and flush, yeah. That's pretty cool. And uh, on the back here, well, here's what we started up is the console. Mm -hmm. the cardboard. That's how you get your general yeah, shape you get figured your out. Yeah, start throwing it in place. Mm -hmm. And then from there, then you transfer it to metal. So anyway, when we started doing the front bumpers, that we narrowed the bumpers down and trimmed them down skinny like this mm -hmm. and built the ground effects for the front, you couldn't do the front and leave the back in you know, alone. So you had to you had to go with the back all the way to the front, mm -hmm. make it all match. So instead of using the old pot metal quarter extensions that they make, you know, that mm -hmm. always fit like crap and I wanted to make the quarter all smooth like this so I built these pieces and it's all be welded and solid. Right, so and instead of being bolt on it'll be welded. Right, okay. and so just come up with this idea on a rear spoiler, tied it all into it, built that and then flushing this out. Wow. And then we will build some tail lights out of some lights on or something. I like this little use. integrated spoiler. I like how smoothly you did this right here. That's going to be pretty cool. It's going to look really nice. So this was done, and then I got the bumpers cut down, and I brought the bumpers in. I had to cut sections out of the middle of it to bring mm -hmm. it in narrower this way because I wanted to tuck it in real tight with the body like I did on the front. I see. So I had to cut some out of here and weld it. Then I had to cut a bunch out of here and bring it in tight and then get the gaps where it's all gapped evenly. Mm -hmm. So then I built a roll pan. Since I cut the bumper off, I built the roll pan to match, you know, up mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, it looks smooth. And then while you're doing that, your mind races and you start coming up with other stupid ideas. And so I decided what, uh, I said to the owner, what about a center exit exhaust? So <laughs> That's once pretty I cool. opened my mouth up, then I had to figure <laughs> out how to make it work. <laughs> So it's got so like rectangular tips. Yeah, that's cool. So this, this is all mounted. It's isolated away from all these panels. It's not touching none of them. Mm -hmm. It's isolated in the urethane uh, sway bar bushings with four mounts, mounting points, two at the top, two down at the side. So then the exhaust will come down and curve mm -hmm. down to it. That's and I cool. also had to take and move the whole trunk floor up six inches because with this four link and the, as low as the car sets, you couldn't run exhaust up over your axles. Oh, okay. Uh, so, and then trying to figure out how to make this all worked mm -hmm. with the exhaust. So I had to raise the whole trunk floor up six inches, make a new floor for it. So it's got drops on each side. So I can't open the trunk up right now because I got the seats in the way. Okay, okay. I was going to ask. <laughs> I don't have a keyhole. Yet. Okay. You got a bore keyhole. <laughs> yeah, I got to do a keyhole. Yet. You have to reach inside with a long screwdriver. That's pretty cool, though. And of course, it's all going to be like custom trimmed out on the and inside and everything. So, anyhow, so what I built a gas tank to match the new floor because I didn't want the tank hanging way down, showing like this. Mm -hmm. And the original tank wouldn't fit in this frame, anyhow. So I made. Uh, took some cardboard and mopped up and figured out the cubic, you know, gallons and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and come up with a, about a 20 gallon tank for it. Well, that'll work. So yeah. I made it out of cardboard and put it in place where I wanted it. So then we got 
uh, four by eight sheet of stainless in mm -hmm. case. So this is what I'm going to build a new tank with. Okay. And so it'll fit right between the frame rails, it'll basically? Fit between the frame rails, and that'll give us um, right about five inches on each side of the tank between that and the frame, so we can run three inches exhaust. Oh, cool. And then the three inch exhaust will run down alongside of it mm -hmm. and then come into this plenum that I made for the rear exhaust, the bullhorn into here like this. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to be neat. So I'm really interested to see how this is going to sound. Yeah, that will be pretty cool. I kind of got an idea it's going to be a little bit raspy. Mm -hmm. This thing's probably going to have all stainless exhaust and everything too. It's won't all it? polished stainless exhaust. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, it's from pipes right here and you got to build it. Oh, okay. You build the exhaust yourself. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Well, that gives us a pretty good overview of what's going on with it, I think. Um, as you can see, he had plenty of metal work to do on this one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like starting with like 15% of the car and building the rest of it, yeah, basically, you know? Yeah, the car off of the frame. <laughs> yeah, that's looking sharp, though. It's got a nice, mean look to it. I know some of the modern cars, like Hellcats and stuff, have that shrouded headlight look. Yeah. And it just gives it a tough look to it. That will do the halo style headlights. And I still haven't really made up my mind yet. In here, I'm thinking about making a, um, a plenum in through here to where it will cool the brakes as well mm -hmm. and dump it into the brake system. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That would also cut down on wind drag mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. 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 Do a yes. smoke screen on it to see mm -hmm. what we're doing. And it looks like you're going to get plenty of air up through the front there to the radiator too, so and that's the, nice. The grill work here, what we're going to do with the grill work is uh, use some billet. And instead of using this old grill right here, since I eliminated the, uh, the aluminum corner pieces here, mm -hmm. I made these out of metal, so I'll just take the uh, billet pieces and then shape them and then make the new grill work and then use a real nice uh, mesh behind it mm -hmm. that kind of, whenever it's set like this at this angle, it will shroud and hide. It'll still get airflow, but it'll hide the uh, interior components of it. Yeah. And I'll do the same down here, just mimic this down here. It'll be meshed in there too, yeah. That'll be cool. That's definitely coming along really well for sure. Well, thanks a lot, Marty, for oh, kind of welcome. showing us around. Anytime, come back next week. <laughs> and we will. We'll actually come back and check the progress every so often and uh, kind of keep you guys updated on it. And, of course, it'll be a big moment when it uh, fires up and everything. We'll be sure to capture that. But as always, we do appreciate you watching and commenting and everything. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.